Well, we're joined now by Arise analyst Mahmoud Jaga and Constance Ikoku. Uh, good to see you both and thanks for your time. Let's start uh, with uh, Mahmoud Jaga. You had Kiamo there, uh, Festus Kiamo, that's uh, the Minister for Aviation, uh, talking about Nigeria's uh, plans. But again, uh, he didn't quite dwell much on the plans, but he was looking at uh, some of the key concerns of uh, the past administration in terms of having a national career. Uh, gauging that particular ministry, before we uh, delve in, let's talk about uh, the key concerns of uh, what we expect to have seen in the last uh, 365 days, uh, Mahmoud Jaga. Maybe before Mahmoud Jaga answers, let's uh, listen to uh, Festos Kiamu's, you know, uh, presentation there before we get into the chat. Our watch, the Open Skies Agreement with the United States has come into operation. We are pushed for that. Open Skies Agreement with the United States. And what does that mean? Operation of, we, are, we signed that, that VASA since 2000. We ratified this since 2002. But it didn't come into force. It didn't. We pushed for it. And we thank God it was also celebrated by the US you know, embassy in their, their social media that we have both achieved this. And that means unrestricted number of flights and frequencies to the US, deployment of any kind of aircraft in the, on those routes, multiple entry points. And so, gentlemen, talk to your brothers, talk to your local operators, we are ready to push them now. We, we will still look for ways to make them, make the aircrafts available to them. But we want Nigerian aircraft, Nigerian, not United, not Delta. We want Nigerian aircraft to begin to, to run the US routes to Atlanta, to Washington, to New York. That is what we are looking for now. And we are going to make it possible and then crash the U.S. price, crash the price on that road. Well, two key things there, uh, you know, getting us uh, to fly those routes and uh, also crashing the price. Mamu Jaga, how uh, does this come to you, uh, talking about uh, the possibilities of us <coughs> seeing these and many others? Uh, <clears throat> I wish the Minister of Aviation will calm down a bit because he sounded <laughs> more like an activist than a minister and uh, the passion sometimes drowns out the, the message. But mm. of course, uh, even when the former administration first touted the issue of uh, Nigeria Air, I think... Uh, Almost unanimous opinion in Nigeria is that uh, better not go down that path again because it will most probably end up like Nigeria Airways. The governments here have shown incapacity to really run complicated businesses like that. And it's not surprising that in eight years mm -hmm. the Air Nigeria never properly, never took off uh, only on the last day of the former minister, he brought one plane from Ethiopia. Uh, so to that extent, uh, Minister Kiamo is right that uh, we should not only suspend, probably we should scrap that project and look for how to partner with private uh, investors. Now, insisting that uh, at this point that it has to be a Nigerian-owned airline that will go, as he said, to New York and Washington, might be a tall order. You see, the international aviation industry is very complicated and capital intensive. And you also have to worry about uh, safety. There has to be a lot of training and very good facilities and all that. And we should better plan that uh, very, very carefully. It's not a matter of beating our chest and saying uh, Nigeria owns this uh, airline. There are other controversial things that the minister said like that all the uh, trapped airline money has been cleared. He said something like that. I hope that is true because, you know, uh, earlier this year <coughs> we had reports saying like Central Bank has cleared all the foreign uh, debts. <laughs> and then people say, I know, but you only paid a few hundred uh, million, million dollars out mm. of seven billion. Mm. And then they said, no, what we cleared was the 
was the, how do they put it, the, the cleared uh, debt or the, the confirmed verified. verified. Exactly, yes, I said yes. that the word that is a verified <laughs> one. Mm, you know, we, we shouldn't pay because unless the foreign right. airlines themselves confirm, we are not sure whether what the minister said is actually true. Well, some of them are uh, coming back, so that in itself is quite telling. Uh, Constance Ikoku, <laughs> let me bring this to you. I mean, you heard the aviation minister there uh, reel out some of his achievements and maybe vision for the uh, sector, if you like. Now, for you, is there any matrix, really, uh, to measure the performance of the aviation sector in the last nine months? And what do you say about, uh, you know, the, the planned push for local airlines to ply the international routes? I mean, there have been some bright spots uh, within the last one year. Um, he talked about um, the local airlines and um, he supported very much Airpeace to begin the Lagos to London route. I think that a lot of Nigerians will not forget that easily. We can see how the prices changed on that route with uh, other international airlines trying also to compete with Airpeace. And um, he also spoke about um, Air Nigeria being uh, suspended. I mean, it has been suspended, but he says it remains suspended. I think that issue or that Air Nigeria project was one of the most audacious and questionable transactions that occurred during the last administration. And people really wanted to know what went on. The former aviation minister, Hadi Sirika, is currently facing fraud charges, charges with his daughter in court regarding that particular project and uh, you know we thought we had seen it all until Hadi Sirika really took it to another level uh, so when the minister says that he wants Nigerian Airlines you know to begin to fly other routes internationally that's a good um, idea it's also a good vision whether that is practicable time will tell there are so many things that can be worked out you can have a vision and a dream the most important thing is to begin to then put down the full steps or the practical steps to make that happen. Um, I think one thing though that the minister might want to look into is um, the cost of airlines today, uh, the cost of tickets today. Uh, an average ticket in Nigeria is about 100,000 Naira. Um, it's very, really uh, exorbitant. Airlines are complaining of exorbitant uh, charges and levies and taxes and they say this is one of the reasons why the cost of tickets have gone up. So it's something you want to look into. Also, the safety of our aviation sector is another area that we have to be very careful about. You want to make sure that we are flying safe within the country. A couple of other things, but um, so far, uh, so good. There's much more to be done within the next three years. And, uh, well, well uh, Constance, thanks. So far, so good. A, a whole lot more for the government uh, to do. And one key thing is that you can't fly in an empty stomach. You can't even go close to the airport when you're hungry. It brings us to the yeah. agricultural sector. But uh, let's uh, take a listen to what the minister has uh, said so far, uh, according to his own scorecard. The harvest that we have realized would, uh, would have an estimated value of about 309 billion naira injected into the economy. In response to presidential directive, we also released for the for the food and security for the food security um, agenda, released for NEMA, to NEMA for onward distribution to the parts of the country to vulnerable population the uh, 42,000 metric tons of, of assorted food commodities made up of maize, sorghum, uh, millet, and gari from the Federal Government of Nigeria Strategic Food Reserve. We also procured and distributed to all states of the Federation, including FCT, 58,500 metric tons of milk rice to dampen escalating prices. This, this 58,500 was a deliberate tactics that we did not go to the market to buy so as not to um, stimulate the upward uh, price. Well, uh, Bubaka Kiari, Minister for uh, Agriculture there speaking. Uh, and uh, the good thing is that he mentioned Gary, <laughs> even though I, I'm happy because it's chuckling there because there was a the time I was asking her to get us Gary. 
and uh, that Gary Don't never worry. came. Gary is uh, still on the so, way. So, so, <laughs> so uh, uh, uh. Mr. Jagat, let's talk about agriculture. We've seen how over since independence, how low we've gone. Every effort by different administration at bringing us back to winning ways in terms of agriculture hasn't actually given us that bite. Uh, in the last one year, what have you seen so far in that sector? Uh, I think <coughs> right now, the cost of food is probably the biggest problem in the country after insecurity. And they are related because the insecurity has affected food production in some parts of the country. Many people are unable to farm. Once you walk uh, a kilometer out of your village, you could get kidnapped by the bandits and uh, all that. So that probably plus other factors such as the dollar rate and things like that have uh, caused a very high increase in the cost of food products and people are complaining uh, all over. So honestly, the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security need a very big push in the short term, in the medium term, and also in the long term because you have 220 million people in Nigeria <coughs> projected to increase to 400 million by 2050. Okay. So really, unless you double and triple agricultural production in this country, we will not be able to feed our population. Right now, I am not sure what the strategy is to bring down the price of uh, food. The minister spoke about releasing, I think he said 54,000 tons now that's that's, the, that's quite small and the other 43,000 metric tons yeah mm. for for the population that we have is not a very big uh, number uh, that they released from the strategic uh, reserves but really if we can make a dent on the insecurity problem then that will enable greater cultivation in many parts of the country and it will increase but if you don't have food because we have to be alive to do anything else if we don't have enough food now, possibly yeah. you will have to import it uh, for, for in the short term. Hmm. Mm. Importing food, will that even be an option for Nigeria? Mm. I mean, 70 million hectares of mm. agricultural land in Nigeria, yet there is hunger to a large extent uh, in the land. Uh, Constance Ikoku, I mean, <laughs> beyond uh, praising himself, this last nine months, have you seen a sense of urgency in the area of agriculture? Well, I think I will tell the line of what uh, Mr. Jaga said. Um, any achievement that this government claims that it has made that has not you know, really made an impact or dent on the prices of food, I think it greatly diminishes whatever they have to say and nobody wants to listen to it. The fact remains that the prices of food are very high and it continues. And if this is the case, what will it be in the next six months? You know, if you have a starving population, there's nothing else that matters to that population except that they want to be able to afford basic food. There's an excellent report that was uh, published by Guardian newspapers in which they chronicled how much change or shift there has been uh, within food inflation between March 2023 and March 2024. And when you look at basic commodities like rice, gari, yam, and beans, they have increased over 100%. And then bread was about 20%. And then you have one or two other things, uh, pepper over 70%. Uh, that is a lot of increase. Um, you know, so when he has this glossy, fancy presentation that talks about 100,000 hectares of wheat and all of that, the bottom line is that when you go to the market and that food is not affordable, that is a problem. So this is an area that the government has a lot of work to do. If you have a starving population, you have crisis in your hands, that's a disaster waiting to happen. So they want to get quickly on this particular sector, the agri-sector, and on this topic, and do something spectacular, incredible in the next six months. If not, nobody wants to hear what they are saying. It include a declaration of emergency in the agricultural sector. Uh, Mamu Jega, 
I mean, what needs to be done urgently. <laughs> Because let me, I mean, on a lighter side, mm. though very serious, on Saturday, I went to the market, sat in my car, you know, asked for tomatoes, a basket of tomatoes, now 8,000 naira. And guess what? I saw more men with lists, with shopping lists in their hands. That tells you something, that men are beginning to doubt, you know, when the women come and say, look, a basket of tomatoes is 8,000 naira. They want to find out themselves. In fact, 10. It's 10,000. There I you go. Last night. There you go. Yeah. So what's the way forward? What does this government need to do to ensure that the, I mean, Nigerians don't starve? Unfortunately, you spoke about state of emergency, which usually suggests drastic action. But right. in this country... We have not had a very good experience with state of emergencies because there was one at one time in the power sector, there was another mm. in the education sector, in the health and the security sectors, and honestly, all of them didn't make a very appreciable uh, impact. But uh, what uh, Dr. Ikoku said is very true. When you have people starving, uh, either because the food is not there or because they cannot afford it, then mm. probably nothing else matters. Uh, nothing else matters. So the government should really adjust its priorities and accord much, much higher pro priority to food uh, production and uh, provision of food and uh, food uh, security. And really, I think it could be said that in the last one year of the Tinubu administration, mm. that does not appear to be one of the highest priorities of the government. Hmm. And by 2050, it's projected that Nigeria's population will be about uh, 400, 400 million. million. Yeah. Yeah. We need to start thinking Honestly. very quickly. I have to say thank you very much for joining us on Newsnight. Dr. Constance Ikoku, Arise Analyst, and Malam Mahmoud Jega, Arise News Analyst. Thank you, both of you for joining.